Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we're a few minutes late in starting. Um, welcome to the planning committee. Now we're on into December, 5th of December, um, to welcome all public as well as all our members. And could everyone present please make sure that their mobile phones are switched off. That is our procedure here in County Hall in, this, um, in the uh, debating chamber because it can interfere with some of the apparatus. Right. Um, I'll introduce ourselves first before we take apologies for absence. I'm County Councillor Ruth e Edwards and I chair the Planning Committee and to my right... County Councillor Peter Clark, the Vice Chairman. Uh, Robert Tranter, I'm the Legal Advisor uh, to the Planning Committee. Philip Thomas, Development Services Manager with the Council. Mark Hands, Head of Planning, Housing and Police Shaping. Uh, Richard Williams, Democratic Services. Uh, Paula Clark, uh, Development Management Area Manager. Craig O'Connor, Development Management Area Manager. Thank you all. Apologies for absence, please. Uh, no apologies, Chair. Right. A full compliment today, although we have had some illnesses amongst some of the members, but we are all full and hearty, I think, getting ready for Christmas. Declarations of interest, please. No one? Gosh, that's unusual. Right, we'll go on to confirm the minutes of the last meeting. Page one to page, oh gosh, get the number, to 10. Do you wish that I move these minutes or is there anybody who wishes? You're all in agreement that I move the minutes? Show of hands, please. Right, thank you all very much. The next thing on item four on the agenda is the first application of today. Um, that is on page 20, 11 to 20, that is 00703. I think I've done that wrong. No, because we've got somebody speaking, we will take that one first, and that will be, uh, it's an application in Landeni, 01128. Thank you, Chair. And Phil's taking this one, thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Phil. I believe we have a member from Raglan Community Council who wishes to speak. Thank you. Could you please state your name and you'll have four minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, members of the Planning Committee. My name is Richard Morby, and I represent Landenny on the Raglan Community Council. This application has been in its various forms going on for a long time now. It started way back in uh, 2016 um, and uh, started off, as has been mentioned, as uh, touring caravans, 30 of them. Um, that application was later withdrawn and replaced with one for seven shepherd's huts. Um, that in turn got reduced to four, um, but all along the different applications, different levels of it, Raglan Community Council have been pressing for and not got details of a number of items. Uh, short, we wrote to the uh, county asking for them to chase for further details. There were no details of any sort of engineering works or things to level out plots. There were no details of where the water would come from. We still don't know where they will get their water. We don't know where they'll get their power from. That also hasn't been mentioned. Drainage, all right, they're now talking of a, a movable toilet block, so we assume it'll be like a sort of portal type thing. But if it isn't, what are they doing with drainage and sewage? They're talking of um, minimal works for access, um, no permanent uh, works, they say. Well, I think you could see from the photo just now, that field actually has got quite a slope on it. And the caravans, or the shepherd's huts, are at the bottom of the slope. Now, in wet weather, those fields do get wet, muddy, slippy. And I'm sure if it's supposed to be a glamping site, the glamour, people are not going to want to park their car some distance from where they're actually camping. They will want to get their cars down to the huts to offload and to get in and out without getting wet. I can foresee cars getting stuck down there and then ending up with tractors having to go in and pull them out and ending up with that field being churned up. Um, there seems to be no thought given to that. Uh, furthermore, um, we would imagine, uh, again, there's no detail, so we're having to sort of guess some of these things, but we would imagine there must be some form of lighting all night to enable campers to visit the uh, amenity block if they wish to. I don't expect they'll have to get torches out. In which case, there will be light pollution coming from that site. And I know, because I live there on Land Any Walk, so we can see that field, and we uh, are not keen on having lights shining all night from across what is currently a relatively dark area. Um, I note, uh, rather sadly, that... Uh, this uh, application has been recommended for approval, but I would ask the uh, committee to think again about this and about the sort of lack of information there is there. And also, how much is it uh, a start of something that may get bigger? It's come down from 30 to 7 to 4, but I think once permission is granted, I would not be surprised in such a large field with things all hidden in one corner that the temptation is not there to start putting more shepherd's huts in there and the scheme growing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. We now have the applicant or agent for the applicant who has a right of reply. Could you please state your name also when you have four minutes? Thank you.
Hello, my name's Sarah Evans and I live at Kevin Tiller Court. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so it's slightly daunting, so you have to bear with me. Um, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about the Shepherd's Huts. The um, Shepherd's Huts has started off um, a little bit array with the application, as um, we've been told. Um, but we have decided just to go with the four because we would like to be more sympathetic with the ground um, and with the four we can be eco-friendly um, and not cause too much disturbance to the land. Um, just in answer to the questions about light pollution, um, toilets and things like that, we will have definitely, um, if you've been glamping in these, these um, shepherd's huts, People have um, solar panels on top of the, the actual units so that they are um, self-sufficient. You know, we want to be environmentally friendly as much as we can because we live in Kevin Tiller and it's not Kevin Tiller is not environmentally friendly. Um, we want to be able to um, not disturb the land so people will be parking at the top and they will have to walk down to the shepherd's huts in the rain, you know, as part of the, the experience, I'm afraid, you know. Um, like pollution, they will have to use torches at night because that is part of the whole thing. People don't want to come away and have all the mod cons. They want to come away and they want to have a, a, an experience of the countryside. Um, we have, um, as, you, as you've been told, uh, the toilet block that is going to be self-contained. Drainage is not going to be used, um, and and it will be taken away as as uh, part of the uh, the, the sewer. Um, and you know, I think it's it's going to be an experience that people will enjoy, but on a basic level. Um, Kevin Tiller is a massive mouth. We are struggling to be able to keep this building maintained or trying to get it to a, a position where sympathetically it's maintained. And, you know, it's not a loss of money, but it will help towards making the roof secure, you know, putting things back that have broken. You know, we've got a, a dilemma at the moment where we have a, um, one of the original windows that's fallen out of the back. We haven't got the money to put it back together at the moment. So this goes towards maintaining Kevin Tiller. If we'd known where we were, we would be now. When, when we first took it over, I think we would have thought differently about um, buying the house. But we are in that position and we need to make it pay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. The committee were there yesterday. Um, and look, viewed the site, and in previous application we had been to Kevin Tiller, so we're aware of the layout of the land, so to speak. Uh, the local member isn't on the planning committee, so and she's not here to speak as the county councillor, so I will take views from anybody who was, wants to comment on that, the visit yesterday. Councillor Harris. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I've got a number of... Uh, questions here uh, it says each hut will be mounted on a grass enforcement system measuring eight meters by three meters so I'd like to know uh, what that is it's been mentioned that it's a sloping uh, uh, site and therefore um, the uh, plots would need to be leveled in some way uh, or another uh, the other thing is I'd like some sort of a assurance on uh, um, a water supply without the water supply it's uh, uh, nobody can uh, use the uh, facility um, so maybe that could be uh, answered and it's also uh, uh, pointed out it's in a gliding safeguarding area now I'm not quite sure how that impinges on uh, this if it goes ahead in any case but it's actually mentioned in the uh, in the blurb that we've uh, got and um the 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 last thing is the uh, the, the toilet block um i'm I'd just like a bit more detail about basically how that will be uh how that will be serviced is the, is the um if you like the collection point that thing to the uh, 
uh, the side of it, that, that fencing to the uh, uh, side of it. Oh, that's a, okay. Um, I'd like it. Oh, that's just, that's just, yeah, okay. Um, So, uh, if we've got any information on the um, grass enforcement system and water supply, that would be useful. Thank you. Uh, Phil will answer most of the questions. Well, yeah, I haven't got the, the immediate answers to that. Um, but uh, what normally happens with a grass reinforcement system, it's, it's like um, a bit like grass creep. There, there's, there's a membrane which is set into the ground, which allows the grass to grow between it, but it'll provide a relatively level surface. So there will be a little bit of regrading to be done. Um, and then the, the, uh, the actual um, uh, mesh membrane allows something to be parked on it so that, so that there's a if you like a bit of friction between the actual and a level platform for the actual um uh, you know the shepherd huts to sit on rather than it sink into the grass as it were it stops that if there is some rainfall it stops that that happening like a platform yeah yeah so condition yeah. sorry so so it's a platform basically yeah. that will will be built into the into the field yeah yeah, but it's made of a made of a membrane, so that that actually allows yeah, the grass I, to grow. I, I, up. Sorry, I've been a bit thick. It's sloping, um, so how are you going to get it level? Um, yeah, there'll, there'll be a degree of regrading in that particular area. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and water supply. Platform. Water supply. I'm, I've got details of. As you, the applicant, could you answer that question, please? They're on the main road. They're on the top of Caterpillar Drive, the T junction. It runs along there. So there is some point to distance. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, Councillor Harris? Yes. Yeah, right. right. Interested right. To hear you the bit about the safeguarding zone for the gliding club. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. Um, in terms of that, that's really. Um, for us to, co uh, uh, to consult the gliding club in case they've got any concerns about quite high structures like telecom mass. Um, obviously, um, something like this, it's, it's only a very low structure. It's, it's not going to be a threat in terms of a, gl a glider. They're more likely to hit the trees, as you say, before they hit any of these sort of... It's, it's a safeguarding issue and for higher structures. Thank you for the explanation, Phil. Anybody else wish to comment? Councillor... Yeah, thank you, Chair, and... Um Thanks, Roger, for asking those questions. Save me doing it. Um, but um, the 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 point that was made by the community councillor about this being the start of uh, of something greater. Of course, uh, we've only got this one application before us, and that's been completely scaled down. Um, I don't think I would have found the um, original applications um, uh, 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 appropriate, not not for that sort of uh, location. Um, but some diversity in the countryside uh, and um, some uh, tourist-related act activity um, should be, be welcomed these days. I, uh, I, I, I don't feel that this is overdevelopment of the site um, for, uh, for uh, removable huts and the toilet blocks uh, up in a corner. Um, shielded by trees, albeit uh, only at the, only behind, but nevertheless um, at the bottom of, of a slope, doesn't strike me as being entirely um, con conspicuous. Uh, so on balance, um, I think that I find this uh, acceptable, but I certainly wouldn't have found anything more large-scaled uh, to fall into that category. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Debbie Blakeburn, please. Thanks, Chair. 
yeah, uh, following um, similar lines, really. Um, I think, it, you know, credit to the, uh, the process, it's been negotiated down from these 30 probably white caravans down to four uh, modest shepherd huts. Um, kind of, you know, I can, I've seen shepherd huts before, they're good designs, they fit in nicely um, with a toilet block there. Um, will it grow into something bigger? We can only look to what comes to us in, in the future. Um, some of the questions, that m initially I was thinking, should we defer it for more information to assess the impact of this project in the area? But I think most of them, the things have been addressed here during, during this meeting, solar panels for the power, um, portable toilets for the drainage, um, lighting, that there isn't any lighting because it is about protecting our dark skies and the idea of then there, there are torches. So again, looking on balance, Monmouth's County Council strategy towards uh, economy development, bringing local economy into the area. I think on balance, I, I would I would approve this scheme. Thank you, Councillor Blake. Councillor Maureen Powell, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I know people are a bit concerned about the water, but I can remember in, in the days when caravanning was a new thing. Um, I mean, everybody was expected to carry their water to their caravan from the standpipe. And I mean, they're going for this type of holiday where it's, that's all the fun of the holiday. So I'm sure that they'll be able to carry their water um, in the containers from the standpipe. I don't think that'll be a difficulty. And uh, the grass creek thing is, is very similar to in the car park of the Plasto Win Inn. And that works very well. So I, I'm, I'm quite happy to propose it. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Councillor Giles Howard, please. Thank you, Chair. I, like other members, I don't have an issue with the principle of the, the placement of the huts on the field. I think it will be quite a low impact. The thing that does concern me, and again raised by the Community Council, is that of the vehicular access off the, off the, off the main road. Um, I note from the plan that it just states uh, there won't be any formal parking arrangement. And I'm just thinking, well, it doesn't take an awful lot if we have a particularly bad summer for a, a single access point to be churned up to the point where it would be unusable. I'm thinking, okay, the applicant might be able to do something about that by putting some material down, but would it lead to vehicles parking on the lane instead? Um, regardless of whether vehicles park on the lane or at the top of the field where it's most obvious, I also think that the vehicles park there will probably be more conspicuous than the, the huts themselves. And I just wonder if there oughtn't to be some kind of condition uh, within the consent to seek details of, of, of a more formalised parking area and some landscaping around it to, to reduce or, or mitigate any impact. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Councillor Matthew Feakin, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I'd echo what uh, Giles has just said, that uh, it's inevitable that um, we need some sort of formalised parking. Um, and I would propose that we defer this scheme um, to come back before us with um, some plans of, uh, of formalised parking. Just mentioning about the um, the emptying of the cesspit or cess, whatever it's going to be, uh, the waste. Um, you mentioned that a lorry will go and pick that up. Well, the lorry's obviously got to get access down to that or you've got to take it up from the, de you know. So there's, uh, um, you know, th there's going to be obvious issues there which we can see at the front end of this process. Uh, so for me, I'd be much more happier if it came back before us with a formalised plan of parking to re to make sure we don't end up with parking alongside the carriageway, which will definitely happen. Um, uh, uh, so yes, yeah, so I, I propose that we defer it and to come back before us with those details. Thank you, Councillor Feakin. Councillor David Dovey. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, I, I, I think Matt has uh, already expressed uh, some of the issues um, that I have with it. Um, the thing is, whichever way you look at it, if the weather's inclement, you are going to get people who want to get away from the site or maybe access the site or, or whatever, and they're going to try and get closer to the car caravans. Um, it's the way people are with their cars and, and whatnot. The other thing is, as Matt has said, you're talking about a vehicle going down there. It will be a substantial vehicle to go down there to take the effluent away. And that will need to have some sort of track down there so that it doesn't dig up the field. I, I mean, we're, we're all talking about it being low impact, ideally. But, I, uh, you know, uh, Wales, I think the advert says you can take everything away from us, but you can't take our water and our mud. Um, and uh, I can well see that that becoming uh, something of an issue unless 
with this green creed, uh, whatever uh, Phil called it. I, I know the principle of the stuff that it's a, it's a layer, but it's permeable. So is that going to be right down to the... Um, is that going to be right down to where the uh, uh, the camping the camping is? I I, I think I, I'm I'm unhappy about uh, the impact of the services and the car parking. And the other very valid point is people if the, they see the field is less than comfortable for their motor cars, they'll park them out on the road. And Charles has a very a very valid point there. So I have reservations about it, and I think it would be good, as Matt has suggested, that some of these issues be addressed and resubmitted to us. Thank you, Chair. Thank Sorry, you. could I just say there's conditions in effect three and four to control uh, details of drainage itself, uh, to clarify aspects of this, and in terms of hard and soft landscaping, so we can draw out those sort of issues to do with the car parking area within the discharge of those conditions, which we could, in, if, if members are uh, find that acceptable, we can possibly bring before the delegation panel uh, to approve. As a, as, a, as a way forward. Thank you. Councillor Harris and Councillor Webb. Thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me come back in again. Yeah, the, um, uh, the uh, parking of cars on the uh, uh, proposed site should be uh, strongly conditioned. That's where the cars stay. And uh, from experience of uh, uh, my daughter's holiday last year, uh, provision of wheelbarrows and trucks for taking possessions from the uh, vehicles up to the uh, um, uh, the huts would be essential to uh, make sure that uh, um, drivers don't suddenly think, oh, I'm going to take my car up there in any case, uh, because they can do an awful lot of damage on a, on a wet field. And uh, I'd like to see that strongly um, enforced that this is the car park and you leave your cars there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Harris. Nowadays, most farms have vehicles called gators that they tend to move about on farmland without too much compression on the land anyway. So something like that could well be in use on something like this when people arrive. Councillor Webb and then Councillor Feekins, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I think Councillor uh, Powell has recommended or approval and I would second that proposal, thank you. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I was picking up on the point that, uh, that Phil has uh, subsequently picked up on. Um, I don't think that um, there's any purpose to be served by deferring it at this stage, but we certainly do need to get those points clarified. And the point I was going to make is, as they are in the conditions <coughs> anyway, um, uh, we could strengthen that by saying that it had to come to the delegated panel after it's been renegotiated by officers. Um, and then if the delegated panel decided that um, they weren't satisfied, they could then come back to committee. Otherwise, we just keep it playing, playing ping pong all, all at the time with application. Thank you, Phil. No, no, right. Mark? Chair, I, I was just going to um, echo what Councillor Murphy said, suggest these details come to delegated panel if panel's happy. Um, I suggest we reword condition four slightly to cover the parking issue more explicitly. Um, but the concern about cars going all over the place um, is probably far more sensitively dealt with with a simple post on my fence rather than uh, um, loads of tarmac or signs or anything. So there's some fairly easy solutions to all of that. Right. <laughs> Um, I don't think we, will, we need to take a vote on deferment. I think uh, Councillor Feekin has withdrawn that suggestion. So I'd like to have a show of hands for approval and also whether you're in favour of it coming to delegation panel to make sure those conditions are all adhered to. Could I have a show of hands for approving that, please? Right, thank you very much indeed. We now go on to page 33 to 40, and that is 00376, and this is Hadnock Road, Monmouth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, application DC 2017 00376, 
It is at Valley Enterprise Park, <gasps> Hadnock Road in Monmouth. This is an aerial photograph of the site which members went to yesterday on the site visits. Um, the application is for outline planning consent with all matters reserved um, to establish the principle of an energy centre in a form of a gas-powered combined heat and power CHP plant um, being sited at the site. If you go to the next slide, Phil, this is where the proposed energy centre would be <coughs> sited. Um, I say it's an outline application, so it's just looking at the location of it at this stage. That is where it would be sited on the site. If you go to the next slide, Phil, and this is a illustration of the proposed uh, energy centre. As I said, this isn't exact details; it is an outline application, just give you an idea of how the, the final um, structure would look like. So the energy centre um, is pr approximately 300 square metres, um, and it would be seven metres um, be between seven metres and ten metres in height, and have a finished floor level of 21.05 uh, metres. Um, the, the actual height of the flue would be dependent on design, so that would be looked at at the reserve matters stage in terms of environmental health, um, <coughs> in terms of mitigation measures for air and noise. They'll look at that, um, and, and that will decipher the exact height of the flue. Um, so that will be determined at a later stage of the reserve matters planning application. In terms of this scheme, the um, planning committee would have looked at this energy centre previously as part of a wider um, development scheme. So. Previous application, DC 2015-01431, was for a, a bigger scheme for a hotel, a spa, a mixed-use development, um, which was considered by the planning application and, and by the planning committee, and this energy centre was part of that and was subsequently approved by the planning committee. Um, that then went off to the Welsh Government, who called the application in and was subsequently refused on flooding grounds. Um, but in the inspector's report, there was... There was no concerns with this energy centre uh, per se, um, but members are looking at this today as a standalone application, so looking at the energy centre in isolation. In terms of consultation on the application, uh, Monmouth Town Council do have raised concerns as outlined in the report, um, mainly relating to the efficiency claims of the energy centre. Um, and that as the hotel and spa have been refused, there was concerns as to why the application is still going forward in its current form. Also concerns with regards to the energy centre not providing any employment. There was four letters of um, concerns raised objections from local residents in terms of what will happen with the rest of the site. Um, if the site remains as hard standing, how will it affect the flooding? What will the emissions have the impact on, on the area? And concerns over the need for this um, energy centre now given the rest of the development is not coming forward. In terms of um, looking at the application, if you look at the flooding matters, the reasons why the previous application was refused. This is a less vulnerable form of development. So the previous application was refused by Welsh Government based on the flooding because of they had sleeping accommodation there for, for people to live in. So there's a, a risk to human life. This is a less, much less vulnerable form of development, which is considered to be in accordance with TAM 15. Um, as outlined in the report, it does meet the justification tests within the TAN uh, and is considered to be an appropriate form of development for this site. Natural Resources Wales have also reviewed the application and don't have any concerns in terms of flood consequences, um, given that the application, the, the structure is built um, above the 21.05 uh, metres. So that in terms of flooding on balance is considered to be that the proposed development is acceptable. In terms of the siting of the energy centre on this particular location, uh, given it's an industrial site, um, it's considered to be an appropriate place to, to site this type of development within Monmouth. It would offer a limited amount of employment. However, the other benefits are is that it would enhance the site, which is falling into disrepair and a bit dilapidated, as you would have noticed yesterday. Um, it's been vacant for over eight years, so um, in terms of bringing some sort of development to the site, this would, this would be beneficial to that. As I said, the design and exact scale and layout of the scheme will be coming as part of a reserve matters application. So this is, is out outlined at the moment. But as you can see from that plan we've just shown, um, the type of thing which would go there would be appropriate for an industrial site. As outlined previously, within the planning um, inspector's decision letter, um, it did not raise any concerns with the energy centres. And environmental health are satisfied with the proposed development um, and the reserve matters application will fully consider the air quality and emissions and the noise from the centre and is providing them that environmental health are satisfied if we, if we designed it in accordance with those requirements. So the, on balance, the application is considered to be acceptable. Um, 
and we are recommending approval of the scheme subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you very much, Craig. Uh, most members, again, were there yesterday, and we had visited the site in a not uh, distant uh, time. Um, I believe we have somebody from the town council who wishes to speak. Thank you. Please state your name, and you have four minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Councillor Felicity Cotton from Monmouth Town Council. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of our chair this afternoon. Um, we noted that the point of such a plant is that it gives a very efficient conversion of fuel to used energy. Um, as in all power plants, heat losses are the major inefficiency. Um, there is no proposed use or customer for the heat generated bar negligible output to the pumping station. The possibility of supply to the new swimming pool complex is suggested but not substantiated and even with this the heat used is negligible compared with the output. The scale of the capacity and output needs to be acknowledged. Even with a spa hotel complex it is thought that the heat generated would be in far excess of that used. We infer the approval was previously granted on the premise that the spa hotel and the CHP plant were symbiotic but not so. It is considered that the heat produced by such a plant would be sufficient to provide heat for an Olympic-sized swimming pool, such as Bath Spa University Sports Complex, and a substantial hospital complex, such as the Oxford Radcliffe Hospital, and the heating and hot water for 300 to 400 domestic homes together. There appears to be no proposed use or consumer for the energy generated bar, we assume, sale to the national grid. This is a fossil fuel burning power station lacking the efficiencies of a CHB and which will be need to dump the excessive amounts of generated heat as a waste product. Gas, as you know, is a fossil fuel generating CO2. It is, however, a relatively clean fuel and there is no suggestion that this application proposal would impact the atmosphere around Monmouth Town. However, it will make its own contribution to global warming claims that it would be a benign and beneficial provider of energy to the town and its economy are not substantiated in this proposal. The application gives no indication that energy would be related to the retail to the community at beneficial rates and so that it does not pass muster as a community power supplier as encouraged in legislation. Under our own Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, uh, we strive for a prosperous Wales, innovative, productive and low carbon society which recognises the limits of the global environment mm -hmm. and therefore uses as resources efficiently and proportionately. And we feel the proposal fails on this front. Uh, we also feel it fails on the globally responsible Wales that we aim to be, where we improve economic, social, environmental and cultural well-being of Wales taking account of whether doing something should make a positive contribution to the global well-being. Under the Environmental Act, we have responsibility to reduce greenhouse gases. And with this proposal, should it not go ahead, production of greenhouse gases therefore are avoided. Should it go ahead with end users of heat generated identified, then by its increased efficiency of greenhouse gas fuel, it would constitute rons responsible use of a fossil fuel, but no end user of heat is identified. Monmouth Town Council would look favourably on this application if it demonstrated the most efficient use of gas fuel. This would require an identified destination or user of the heat produced. If it demonstrated beneficial and lower cost and efficient power supply, both heat and power to the local community, and if it was a constituent part of the development bringing advantage to the local community. But we feel it does not and we don't recommend it for approval. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jez Becker, please, Councillor Jez Becker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the uh, heat produced by um, a generator like this is a concern if it doesn't have an end user. However, we don't have the technical information on what that heat would be because this is out by the planning permission. Um, equally, if you look at it in the context of the greater site, um, we wouldn't actually expect this to, going forward, something will happen with that site and this uh, generator will be part of that, but we can't look at that either because we have to take the merits of the proposition in front of us and not the future of the site into account. 
Um, considering that it's only outline permission, um, I would move that we approve for it because we need greater context to know what the, what the proposal would be uh, technically in order to see if there is a problem with, uh, with the heat output. So. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Councillor Alan Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I concur with what Councillor Becker is saying. Uh, my only concern about the site was the flooding, and I understand that that doesn't apply in this case. Um, we are here to, to look at the planning matters, not about you know whether this is uh, commercially viable or not. And in my in my opinion, I second the proposal that it's uh, it's accepted. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Harris. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah, it's been mentioned. It is uh, an outline, and uh, the Town Council has uh, raised uh, a, a number of points there, which I sincerely hope, uh, if we do approve this outline uh, uh, planning permission, they'll address very strongly when it and if it uh, goes any further. It is vital um, that it is a combined heat and power plant, not just a power plant. Uh, it says combined heat and power now, and I'm sure this committee would really want to make sure that was the case. And, uh, you know, with the backing of, um, uh, of uh, the strong feelings of the uh, Town Council, uh, if it does go ahead properly, as, uh, as mentioned, it should be uh, positive for the Town. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Councillor Brown, please. Sorry, thank you, Chairman. Um, what I was going to say is I think um, uh, this is the right type of uh, development for C2 because it isn't um, highly vulnerable resident uh, development. Um, so it falls within the right um, type of policy for a development on, on the C2 um, flood area. Um, the other thing that I think has been raised by... Um, uh, Monmouthshire, Monmouthshire uh, Town Council is the idea of uh, a form of community benefit. Now I'd be interested to know whether or not this is something that could be looked at at uh, the full planning permission uh, uh, stage and I'd, I'd welcome a comment from officers on that because I can see um, you know the point that's being made there because obviously you know you do have um, solar farms which um, contribute to the local community and so forth and so I just wondered as this was an energy um, type of generation whether the same things would be applicable so that there was some community benefit either in terms of the energy that was produced for um, being no, not just sold to the grid, but basically possibly available for the local community, or alternatively, there was some form of uh, community um, benefit available in this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Do you wish to comment on that, Craig? Because as this is just outlined, I think all those sort of details would come at a more detailed st stage. Well, with regards to the community, so you talking about financial benefits, or are you talking about... Yeah, because, I mean, uh, you know, sort of... Sorry, my mic's still on. Yeah, sorry, I mean, like, fo um, solar farms, you know, sometimes give a, a sort of a yearly benefit to the local community, and I was thinking about the same sort of thing here, really. I wouldn't be aware of any a sort of mechanism to do that as part of this... It's a smaller application in terms of this particular size of energy centre. Um, I'm not sure any of my colleagues feel really different to that, but... Yeah, Chair, in terms of things like solar farms, where we do hear about those community benefits, they're all um, separate agreements between the developer and the local community. Um, and those kind of things may have happened in Lanfapley, for example. But that's not part of the planning process. It's not part of the planning decision. Um, it's something that the developers offer. Um, so, yeah, that wouldn't be something that we would tie, tie them into. Councillor Murphy, thank you, uh, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And um, I see the benefit of this uh, potentially as being a catalyst for the redevelopment of the, of the site. Uh, I don't see much um, community benefit from, uh, a, particularly from a heat source that far away from uh, in anywhere, but uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, commercial applications that would sit well on, on that site that would benefit from, from su such a, a heat source. Uh, but clearly, um, we can sort all of that out at the reserve matter stage. So, um, as this is uh, only uh, <coughs> an, 
an outline app application. I think the I think the the case for using it as a catalyst to develop the the site, which um, reading the report seems to be what the uh, what the uh, owners of the site are looking for. Uh, I think we should support it. Thank okay. thank you, Councillor Murphy. Mark. Chair, yeah, just thinking through what's being discussed um the reserve matters are they coming we'll be looking at the things like the details of the site and of the building its appearance any landscape and other sites um so i would expect um if there are details of an end heat user that we would know them then but it isn't something i don't think we would actually control happy for rob to correct me if uh, or, or colleagues if they think i'm wrong um so i don't want members to think that there's something we'd 100 percent have control over at the next stage um, so if you're thinking the only benefit or the only reason this is acceptable is because there is an end heat user, um, I think we need to look at a, well, either a different conclusion or a different way of trying to secure that. Um, I think the way that we're looking at it and the inspector look at it is in itself, um, it's acceptable. It's not unacceptable. An end heat user would, you know, would be, uh, would be great and you'd think would make more commercial sense for them. Um, I completely understand what the town council is saying and why they're saying it. Um, I'm just trying to think through and advise you on how we'd square that off if that is the rationale for your decision. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we would control that via reserve matters. So I think either you'd need to be satisfied that it's acceptable in its own right. Um, we'd encourage them to have an end user for the heat, but we can't guarantee it. Um, or think of some other way of somehow controlling that. Uh, I'm not even sure if a condition on that regard would be would be reasonable. So can I defer to Rob for any guidance? Um, if I could assist, uh, Chairman, I, I, I think that's plainly a, a commercial decision for the for the applicant. And uh, if the applicant um, uh, is successful and, and, and obtains planning permission, um, then it's a matter really for the applicant uh, to work out who the end user is and to supply that end user um, with the energy. Um, that's not something that we can uh, control here uh, uh, as a planning committee. Thank you for that, Rob. Uh, Councillor Giles Howard, please. Thanks, Chair. A, a couple of questions. The, the first one then, and somebody mentioned uh, probably the, the Town Council representative about the um, Future Generations Act, and I notice a, a lot of uh, appeal judgments come through with the uh, paragraphs appended um, making reference to that. And it, it, it Twig one thing with me, and Mark's reference again to the reserve matters being scale, appearance, etc. Then, how would we deal with determining a, in, in a future application um, things like um, em emissions and whether they might be harmful to health? Because that isn't a, a reserve matter, really, is it? But we don't know the, the scale or the type of the equipment that might be installed within it. And the other thing, then. I'm familiar with the, with the concept of short-term operating reserves as a backup to national um, grid capacity and, and, and peak demand, but in the absence of any consultative responses from energy providers or even Western Power with, within the report, and I'll stand corrected if, if they have come in separately, I just find it odd that somebody would uh, try and promote this development without any justification regardless of whether or not it's acceptable in terms of its siting etc and compatibility of, of surrounding land uses I, I just find it odd that somebody's going it alone on a energy product project that might or might not be um, uh, useful to, to what happens on the surrounding land and f for that reason I, I I find it difficult to support it thank you uh, councillor Howard councillor Debbie Blakeborough thanks chair um, yeah, I'm struggling here as well. I guess I'm, my, my question is, what's the point of it? What's the purpose of it? Um, and um, it, within Monmouthshire, we've got to look at what do we want Monmouthshire to look like? What do we want to develop? Now, being a fossil fuel burning energy um, centre, it's non-efficient, it's non-sustainable, and it's not very innovative neither. Um, there's clearly no benefits to Monmouth having that there, no employment, uh, there's no free energy to the local school, for example, or anything like that. Um, and I'm questioning what are the negative, what's the negative impact of having that? I, I don't know. And I'd, I'd like to, to have that information, what, you know, in terms of emissions, those kind of things. So I guess I think on that balance, would come in with the detail stages of this is just Yeah, outline. the only thing is once you've given outline permission, 
very hard to take it away, I think. Uh, so for me, I'd need more information in terms of what's the negative impact in, and what's the purpose of it and how it's going to benefit Monmouth before, before going ahead. So I couldn't support it at this stage. Right. Councillor Becker. Thank you, Chair. Um, having been educated on what we can and can't control in the reserve matters, I would actually um, uh, rescind my proposal that we, uh, the, that we accept it, because that, does, that really uh, attenuates my concern about the, the waste heat. So I prefer to see it as part of a, a larger proposal for the site, so that we know that it's, uh, it's actually going to be an efficient um, device. So. Thank you. Councillor Powell. Uh, yes, but this is only outlined for that. And they're saying about a larger site, we aren't allowed to put the hotel and all that that was going to be there before. So it's going to have to look for something more like industrial or um, daytime things, isn't it? So surely it'd be far easier to market that place if there is a generator there to start with. Um, and it is only outline, isn't it? I mean, the details will be added later, won't they? Thank you. Uh, uh, Craig, perhaps you can answer some of these queries that we're getting. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, to answer some of the queries in relation to human health and emissions and air quality, etc., um, that is covered by condition number four of the, of the proposed conditions, outlining environmental health officers being heavily involved um, with this application in the previous application and also this application, and are satisfied that the information submitted so far is acceptable. Um, the principle of an energy centre going there on CHP plant is acceptable. Um, the finer detail does need to be looked at as part of the reserve matters application and it will be looked at to make sure that it meets the regulations um, and that's what that condition is there for, to work with environmental health to make sure we get the right solution in the reserve mats in terms of the design of the building and the, and the, the size of the flue and the exact proposals um, and that will be dealt with at that stage. And the environmental health officer was very... Um, he outlined in his comments that this is supported on a national level, this type of development, and subject to... The development being done in accordance with the regulations, there wouldn't be any unacceptable harm to human health. So they seem to be satisfied on, on that point. Um, in terms of end users, um, I know the applicant is working, it's outlined in your late correspondence that they're working trying to meet an end user with local businesses and local schools, etc. Um, so they are trying to find that end user. And as I said this is a speculative application to establish whether the planning committee members are happy with the principle of this type of development going there. Thank you, Craig. Councillor Alan Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, in view of uh, the original proposal has been withdrawn, I would like to propose a proposal for outline planning permission for this application. Uh, and I think Councillor Murphy has made a very good point that this could be the catalyst for further development on what is a really an eyesore that site. Uh, and I would suggest that all these things that people are talking about will come at a later stage. This is I outline planning permission, and I see no reason why it can't be approved. Thank you. Um, if nobody else wishes to comment now, did you wish to comment, <coughs> Councillor Harris? No, no. Um, I would like to take the vote on approval of the application for an outline. This is. Uh, and you have a seconder in Councillor Webb. So a show of hands for approval for outline of the application. That's 11 for the application, Chairman. And those against the application? Abstentions? One abstention. So the application is... Right, thank you very much indeed, Rob. <coughs> we now... 51. Application 01120, and this is in Crick. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, application DC 2017-0120. It is Woodside Crick, which is a semi-detached property um, in the open countryside, um, approximately 400 metres east of the settlement of Crick, just off the A48. And the application um, is for a two-storey rear extension, porch and single-storey rear extension to the kitchen. This existing photo is members seen on site yesterday, and this is the rear elevation of the property. Let's go to the next photo. <laughs> this is the neighbouring property, um, Sunnyside, which has an existing two-storey extension projecting up the rear. This is the site um, plan of the application, um, just showing where the single-storey and the two-storey, oh sorry, the 
existing site plan. And this is the proposed then showing the um, two story extension on the back and the single story lean to. So these are the proposed plans of the proposed development. Um, so there's a two story extension at the rear and also a single story extension. So the extensions will project out by approximately four meters. Um, single story extension will measure 2.5 to the ease and three meters where it meets the house. And the double story extension will measure 4.5 to the ease and approximately seven meters to the ridge. Um, so it's to create additional bedroom and additional kitchen hall, just a, a reorientation of the existing dwelling. So that is the proposed scheme in more detail. Um, and from this then you can see um, the architect has put in a 45 degree line from the, the neighboring window and um, which serves a bathroom. Um, that is the 45 degree line from that window from the center point, which is considered to be best practice. It is slightly um, ajar, but it's, it's very minimal. So in terms of the planning application, um, it is a amendment of a previous scheme, which was DC 2014-00797, which was for a two-story extension, which wrapped around the side and the rear, and so slightly different from this scheme, and this application has come in as a replacement to that. The application, in terms of consultation, has been recommended for refusal by the local community council, um, considering it has, is significant extension uh, directly on the boundary, which will impact on the immunity and access to light of the neighbouring property. There's also been um, one letter of objection from the neighbouring property on the application, um, which outlines that the pros extension will block daylight into their kitchen and obstruct views into the countryside at the rear. Um, and there's also been concerns raised in terms of uh, drainage and soakways at the site. Members obviously looked at those points yesterday and was able to um, access the members and um, the neighbours' um, kitchen and have a look at the impact of the extension. The in late correspondence, um, the neighbouring party has also outlined um, slides to issue where the sunlight, daylight is, in terms of how it impacts on them. So they're outlined in the late correspondence for you as well. In terms of design scale of the proposed extension, um, officers feel that design is acceptable and the scale of the extension is, is in accordance with our policy H6. Um, in terms of percentage, it's considered to be a modest subordinate extension to the existing building um, and the existing dwelling would be the prominent part of the resultant structure. So in terms of design and scale, we do feel the development is acceptable. In terms of, it, as outlined in the report, in terms of the impact on the neighbouring property on balance, although it is recognised it will have an impact, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable. In the report, it's outlined that the lean-to extension is, is the main um, concern of the development. That would actually be permitted development, so that doesn't actually need planning consent. So you can do a certain amount of development without the need for planning consent, and that lean-to would actually meet those requirements in terms of permitted. The two-story extension um, is also considered to be ac acceptable in terms of the impact it would have on the neighbouring property. It is a, a north-facing garden. Um, the two-story extension would have a limited impact on the amount of sunlight that that's received, but on balance it is considered to be acceptable. And there are no windows which would look into the, into that, in that direction in terms of privacy. So on balance, all things considered, it is recognised that the development will have an impact, but it's not considered to be unacceptable to warrant refusing the planning application. So on balance, the development is considered to be in accordance with our policy EP1, the Local Development Plan. So for that reason, the proposed development is considered to be acceptable and is recommended for refusal for, um, for, for approval, I apologise, for approval for the conditions outlined in the application, in the report, sorry. Thank you, Craig. Uh, the members were all there yesterday. Normally, this household application would not be coming to the planning committee, but the local member asked if it could be um, come here to us today. Um, usually, I mean, as Craig stated, some of it could have been done and permitted development as well. And if it had come to the delegated panel, we would have gone out as a panel and spoken with the applicant and those that were objecting. And it needn't have come then to planning today. But as it is, it did. So we do have somebody who wishes to speak. And that is the objector. If you'd like to take the stand, please. And you have four minutes. And please state your name.
Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Julia Bainton and I live at Sunnyside. Um, when we had our extension built in 1988, we always knew that one day a similar extension could be built next door and we accept that this is only fair. The issue for us in this case is that the extension proposed at Woodside seems out of keeping with the design and character of a pair of semi-detached houses because of its size and position. It would make the kitchen at Sunnyside very dark, gloomy and depressing, as well as spoiling the outlook from the kitchen windows. Sunnyside and Woodside were originally designed in such a way that the rear sections were set wide apart from each other to protect the amenity of both dwellings. The extension at Woodside would be built right up to the joint boundary. In the design statement it says that from the outside the two-storey extension at Woodside would give the impression of matching the two-storey extension next door. This may be true but it's also true that from inside the kitchen at Sunnyside, it would be visually overbearing and oppressive. The proposed two-storey extension at Woodside projects quite a lot further out than the one at Sunnyside. It would block out the afternoon sun and cast a deep shadow over all the rooms at the rear of Sunnyside, especially on sunny afternoons in the summer. Sunnyside's kitchen has two windows, both of which currently receive direct sunlight that would be blocked by the proposed extension. The proximity and, side of, and size of the extension would also significantly reduce the ambient light received at other times of day. Because of its position in relation to Woodside, the two-storey extension at Sunnyside does not have a similar impact on Woodside because the sun never shines from that direction. Um, the restriction of light to the kitchen would force us to use electric lighting at all times of the day, even on the brightest days of the year, as a matter of routine. This completely unnecessary increase in power usage caused by the extension would be in direct contravention of policy S12 regarding efficient resource use. There's a lot of space at Woodside and I think it would be more appropriate to build the new extension further away from the joint boundary or even sideways instead of to the rear so that both properties could continue to enjoy a reasonable amount of daylight and sunlight instead of the improvements to one property being at the expense of the other. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak at this meeting. Thank you very much. Right, the applicant has the right of reply if you'd like to speak, please. Please state your name and you also have four minutes. Madam Chairman, members of the committee and general public, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this afternoon. My wife and I love the character of our 1920s arts and crafts inspired ex-county council small holding. We wanted to keep that character of the property and that is why we decided not to extend to the front and rear as per the 19 the nine, uh, 2014 original plans w w which had approval. Our application with guidance uh, from the planning office and what have you and, and the input of our architect was to have a substantially reduced extension than the two four, 2014 original position. We felt the best option was to extend our property at the rear, which was in keeping with our neighbours at Sunnyside. And not diminishing the original character of the property. The two storey extension, um, I'd like to just expand a little bit on what the councillor said, 
to build a two-storey extension, we are removing the existing um, existing bathroom that is there. So the actual impact of the of the new extension in real terms will only be a, a, a meter because um, that piece there is being taken off and the new extension goes there. So when you, when, when you say it's four meters, the, the, that four meters includes what's already there. And our extension then is less than 800 mil uh, longer than the extension that's on Sunnyside. The two, uh, the two story extension to match the neighbor at Sunnyside. This, this extension um, fits in with the uh, guidelines on Nia Watts' report uh, 5.2.1. The single story part of the extension that is close to the boundary has a very low pitch, which could be de determined, as we've already heard, under permitted development as near what is recommendation number 5.2 which is inside the boundary by approximately 300 millimeters my wife and i would like to thank you all for taking the time to make the site visit yesterday we tried to mark out as plainly as possible what our intentions were by marking the outline of the of the extension with um, sheet marker on the patio so everybody could see exactly what we had in mind. And our neighbor also marked the height of the extension by uh, placing a marker on the boundary wall. We believe with the topography of the ground, the extension at that point is at least 100 to 150 mil lower the, the, than the marker that was lay, uh, put on the wall and also the roof line is set back by the 300 mil we already I have already mentioned because the roof line is inside the boundary wall not on it making the, the light accessible to the neighbor much greater than what the marker would would originally uh, make it seem so far less obstructive than the, the height marker was that was set on the wall we are only planning to extend our a property approximately by 30% more than its original footprint. Could you please try and wind up, please? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. So, so we only just to have a, an upstairs family bathroom and a larger kitchen. Thank you very much indeed for listening to my points. Thank you very much indeed. As I said, most members were there yesterday, and I believe the local members. Louise Brown, if you'd like to s start the comments, please. Yes, thank you. I think I think this is a, obviously a very uh, difficult application. Um, you know, there have been objections, which is one of the reasons why um, it was brought um, to the committee. Um, with the chair's permission, I'd like to make a comment after listening to the committee's views on this particular application. Um, I am. I do have obviously some sympathy with the objector, but I haven't made up my mind yet as to um, which particular way um, I, I should argue. So I'd very much appreciate listening to the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, Councillor Charles Howard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I acknowledge um, Louise's comments and just about most forms of householder development are going to have an impact on on the neighboring property very often where the the, the whole scope of the works is permitted development and as, as Craig has, has pointed out in his introduction just about all of this would be considered to be PD anyway and I'm being sad I went and checked the red regs again last night instead of watching tipping point and noted that the only part of the development that I could see that that wouldn't be PD is a two-story part but having said that, the two-storey extension could be constructed because I think there's sufficient setback from the boundary of two metres. So that could be constructed to three metres depth and the four metre depth of the single storey below. So to my mind, the, the matter for determination 
and our, our decision as committee is whether or not that extra metre of depth on the two-storey extension is detrimental to the neighbour's amenity or not, or to such a degree as to, to warrant refusing it. And, and for, for that reason, I, I, I don't think it is. And I note from scaling up from the, the PDF I managed to down, download from the website, the single storey part of the extension that's closest to the boundary isn't a, as, as high as it could be, in fact, because it could go to a maximum height of, what, four metres where it cuts into the rear elevation. And I think I've just scaled that at 3.3 metres. So it's, OK, appreciate it will have an impact, but something taller than that could have been built without the need for any consent. And so bearing in mind um, that the scope of it largely doesn't need consent, I, I'd be happy to move approval. But, Red, uh, yeah, I acknowledge that it's going to have an impact on, 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 on the neighbour. Thank you very much, Councillor Howard. Councillor Murphy? Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, I think uh, Councillor Howard has pretty well sent send it up. Um, I think we all felt that um, that, that uh, kitchen in the uh, in sunny side was a dark room anyway and will inevitably be, be made darker uh, by this. But the point is the fact that um, it could that extension could could be built anyway whatever we we do so uh, it's it's regrettable because i think that the um, that the neighbor at sunnyside uh, would be uh, disadvantaged um, but um, i'm going to have to vote for approval thank you councillor murphy anybody else wish to comment councillor blake brown um, yeah sort of echoing the points really um, we can only make a decision based on uh, planning um, legislation and considerations. And under planning legislation, we don't actually have a right to, to light. We have a right to privacy. And we do have a right um, that it doesn't have a significant negative impact on somebody's health and well-being. I think there will be an impact on their... Um, they use the words feeling gloomy, overbearing, could be quite depressing in that room. Um, I can see that and I do sympathise with that, but I think on balance there is light all around the rest of the house. They're in a, you know, a beautiful setting, they have got access uh, to light. Um, so I think on balance um, I, 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 will, I can't see any planning reason to refuse this. Thank you, Councillor Blake. Brown. Anybody else wish to comment? I'll call again Councillor Brown then, please, to sum up on yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I think um, I do have a great deal of sympathy with the neighbour because of the um, particular issue in relation to the uh, kitchen window. But I can also see the problem here is is in relation to the planning policies and effectively what you can and you can't do. Um, I would certainly, um, in, in terms of... Um, the development, I mean, the, the, the only argument would be was whether the two-storey and the one-storey together would impact an overshadowing and overdevelopment point. I mean, it is, on the other hand, I do sympathise in relation to the applicants because they, you know, the neighbours had a two-storey extension and they also want a two-storey extension, but it's a shame that there is also a one-storey extension which is very close to the boundary, which is the one um, that will uh, impact. And we can consider the situation with regard to residential um, amenity if the committee is, is minded to do, but obviously it depends on what the, uh, what the vote is following... Um, uh, the the committee looking at it, but I mean there is a, there is that possibility, and even with um, permitted development rights, um, we we still apparently, according to the planning policy for Wales, we have to consider reasonableness as well. You know, so a consideration with regard to overshadowing is is obviously one of those um, particular issues that can be considered and normal policies with regard to overdevelopment and so forth. Um, but I think that's the only comment that I would like, like to make. And um, I think it's just uh, unfortunate that this development is one where um, it does impact uh, a neighbouring property so much. And it's a shame that there isn't another form of development that uh, could have uh, succeeded in not doing that. But uh, the difficulty I have is that if... If, for example, this was approved, and, that, and I think if it went to appeal, unfortunately, I think it would lose, and I think that's the 
a reality that we've we've got here and um so so very re reluctantly i'll leave it to the committee to vote on this thank you thank you very much councillor brown i believe it was moved did you councillor murphy move for approval did you, yes yes councillor murphy moved for approval and, and seconded by councillor ann webb could i have a show of hands for approval please <coughs> Those against the proposition? Uh, Abstain. Right. right, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Rob. Now to page uh, 57, 201, sorry, 01256. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paula. Uh, this is a retrospective application for the retention of um, a small garden building, which you can see there. Um, on the photograph, within the, the garden of 22A Penny Pound Abergavenny, um, and also to the retention of uh, minor landscaping works. Uh, this proposal is an amendment to a previous permission which granted a pool building um, at the site, which, um, you see, Phil? Yeah, that's the pool building that was allowed previously in 2016. Um, and during that uh, application, that uh, pergola or garden building was um, in, a, in a different location um, next to, um, that's it, yeah, that's where it was previously. So uh, when we considered the pool building in 2016, that's, that was the siting of the pergola. Um, the applicants have now uh, moved the pergola into its current position and uh, uh, that's what we're considering today. Uh, the main issue is the, um, is the timber structure measuring 4.9 by 3.2 and 3.2 metres high. Um, the relatively small garden structures contained from any view within the enclosed residential curtilage is well away from any neighbouring boundaries and does not result in any overlooking or harmful to any party's residential amenity. It can't be viewed from the street or for any vantage points other than the first floor windows of immediate neighbours. The applicants have submitted a landscaping plan of how they intend to plant their garden, um, which is just um, slightly different to what was previously approved. If you can see, they've planted a, a hedgerow around uh, the bend next to the, um, to the pergola, and uh, that hedge just, um, that's been relocated uh, from uh, behind the pergola where it, it uh, originally was considered to be and the planting beds uh, are marginally different uh, that's the only uh, differences um, so officers have can uh, recommend approval of this application thank you very much we do have two speakers on this application um, one from Abergavenny please is it Marion Gibson Please state your name and you have four minutes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Marianne Gibson and I'm speaking to flag up the concerns of five neighbours whose homes encircle the diminished garden of 22A Penny Pound. We are united in asking you to refuse this retrospective application. Legally, this is a far more complex matter than whether a pavilion can be allowed in a front garden or anything to do with permitted development. It is about a significant breach of a strict planning condition which residents had every reasonable expectation would be implemented. The knob of the problem here is that with the original consent for the large indoor swimming pool, 
there was a strict condition requiring the implementation of a compensatory green landscaping plan. There was no suggestion of a large high roof pavilion on a concrete plinth directly in front of the pool building where an open vista and lawn were marked on the original consented plan. The officer handling the application for the pool produced a fair and balanced report stating, I quote, for the avoidance of doubt, the landscaping plan is to be carried out precisely according to the submitted plans to safeguard the landscape amenity of the area. However, this binding plan has been cast aside and rendered impossible to implement by the moving of the pavilion. Residents ask, how can this be fair? The proposed new plan is vastly inferior in its layout for neighbours and now places the pavilion in an intrusive dominating position, where previously, in its former position, it caused no hindrance and no loss of privacies. The report refers to evergreen screening borders, but in reality, this is now only in areas near the house and pool, with just a beach hedge and no longer a large planting bed immediately behind two houses in Penny Pound. Also importantly, the applicant was left in no doubt by the council's enforcement officer that if they continued to carry out the work, it was at their own risk. Despite this, the pavilion was moved and a broad shingle and paved path laid. Neighbours question how, after such a strict approval was imposed, another planning officer is now recommending approval, and we would like to point out significant errors in the new report. Some have just been reflected in the planning manager's own summary. Firstly, the report states that the house is recently built, yet there has been a house and a mature garden on the plot for 45 years. The report states that the pavilion can only be seen from neighbours' first floor rooms. This is wholly inaccurate. For instance, it can be viewed from our lounge at 20 penny pound and the garden. In fact, one of your pictures there was taken actually from our garden as the stream represented there is actually the boundary of 20 and 22, not 22A. So we have quite a vista of, of the newly moved hut. It can also be seen from Avenue Road and Avenue Court Flats. Again, that's counter to the report, which says that it can't be viewed from the street scene and therefore doesn't impact the conservation area. Significantly, neighbours had to challenge the first version of this retrospective application. Only then was it made clear that it was, in fact, much larger a building, an oval bandstand style, not a simple rectangular hut as on the first iteration of the submitted retrospective plan. The maker's brochure, in fact, says it can seat 10 people, yet the planning officer states in the report that it's relatively small. We thank Ward Councillor Paul Jordan, who has objected to this application on the grounds that it would be detrimental to the amenity of adjacent properties. Could you please properties. wind up? You've almost had your four minutes. Thank you. We urge you to refuse the application and honour our reasonable expectation, as is enshrined in law, that the approved scheme should be delivered. Otherwise, neighbours will have been duped to their detriment, as my picture shows, which if I might pass for the perusal of the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, we Afternoon. Please state your name and you'll have four minutes also. Yeah. Good afternoon, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Planning Committee. My name is Michael Williams. I am and I am the applicant to the movement of our garden, pavilion, summer hut. It's been called a number of things. Um, from my point of view, I must apologise to the committee because I didn't think I needed planning permission to move a garden hut that was on one side of my garden to the front of the garden when the swimming pool building was built. It just didn't look right where it was. And because we had the builders there on site, um, and 
everybody has said since that it actually is in a better position now than it was before. Um, as for the concrete plinth, it was on a concrete plinth. As for the power, it had power. As for Mrs Gibson's remarks that she can see it from her downstairs uh, lounge, she cannot unless she opens her gate, which um, they put up a few years ago. Um, I just asked the, the planning committee to look at it as it is and I hope that they agree with myself that it's actually in a better position now for ourselves and for the, uh, the amenity of my family. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Again, the members were there yesterday, although um, previous applications that have been there with the swim pool, etc. I don't know if that was just a delegation panel or not. So the local member is not on the planning committee, so the nearest um, member is Councillor Powell, is it? If you'd like to, you're an Abergavenny yes. member, so I'll take you first, you. please. Yes. Uh, personally, I, I can't see much wrong with it. Um, I looked at the picture that's just been passed around. I assume that's from this side. But as far as the other houses are concerned, there's a very tall wall down there, unless they're either very tall people or they look from their other upstairs windows, they can't see it. And it's a long way back from the boundaries from anybody. And um, seeing the picture of where it was before, it looked a bit odd there. And it does look more in keeping back where it is now. Um, it is a matter of opinion. Obviously, everybody's got different ideas about where they think something should be suited. But when you think about some of the properties that uh, are jammed up against each other, I mean, there is plenty of room around that. Um, I can't see, it's not really overbearing on anybody else. So um, um, I'm quite happy to propose it to, to be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Councillor um, Roger Harris now, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Can we, uh, what, what, can we first establish that the pavilion had permission for where it was originally um, and if you can see the uh, the the picture and that had permission to be there I don't know I'm afraid Chair. Yeah, we'll have a quick check on the history now um, it's probably worth mentioning it would need consent um, almost for a slight quirk because of the way the house is oriented it's to the front even though that's what I would probably describe as their private garden area um, that's why it needs permission but we'll have a quick look now uh, Madam Chair can I just point out we didn't have planning permission to put it there originally. sorry we did not have planning permission to put it there originally because we didn't think we needed one Thank and, and nobody brought it okay it was absolutely no hindrance to anybody it wasn't in line with side and was no issue I, I just want to refer to Council Powell's point Nobody, despite many invitations from the council uh, staff or councillors, has come and seen the impact from the houses <coughs> that have written concern, including the <coughs> Chair, sorry, could I just complicate things further slightly by saying um, the permitted development regs changed a few years ago, and under the old regs, it wouldn't have needed planning permission, but under the new regs, it does. Right, okay. So and it may have it, it may have innocently been put there. Uh, well, either way, it was innocent, and uh, the applicants apologised. Um, but it's possible that originally it didn't need consent, um, and now it does. But either way, it is where it is. The question but, is, yeah, is it okay. acceptable or not? Okay. Can can we go back to um, uh, the uh, uh, the existing one now? Then, um, as, as far back. as it re that, that's it re regarding um, overlooking, uh, it, it seems to me <laughs> uh, that it's the neighbours that can have a jolly good view of uh, what's going on in the um, uh, pavilion, rather than people in the pavilion uh, uh, being able to. Uh, uh, to see uh, uh, to see out uh, I, 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 like Maureen um, uh, I'm afraid I will find 
uh, extremely uh, difficult to uh, to vote against this. Uh, if we did so, I'm, I'm sure the inspector will be wondering what we're uh, we're all about. It's a it's a very large garden, um, and uh, it's uh, it's internally secluded. Let's put it that way. And uh, uh, I <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry for the uh, objectors, but I can't see a, a valid reason to uh, object to this. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll take Maureen now for it because she wants to um, clear something and then I'll take Giles Howard yeah, and then Councillor Moore. Something. You said if this was the back garden of that house, there wouldn't be a problem. But, you know, to me, that there isn't a garden the other side at the back of the house. This is their garden. So it's like it's their only garden. Yeah, it's it's a quirk of the regs. Yes. Um, right. they're, they're written pretty much assuming everything's so a nice house perpendicular yeah, to yeah, the street yeah. with the front garden, the back garden, yeah. what we call a principal elevation, yeah, which is yeah. normally really yeah. easy to distinguish on a house. Yeah. And on this house would be the one facing yeah. towards that garden. Right, yeah. And under the new regs, it's simply that it's forward of the principal elevation. Therefore, yeah. it needs permission. But, it, but I was going to say, if that was the back garden, then it would still be in the way of people looking out. So therefore, then it would be passed anyway so the only, the only difference yeah. is the fact the house is the wrong way around <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I, I just bring committee back to the the question of is it is it causing demonstrable harm to uh, to neighbors and their immunity or visual immunity that's that's the key point thank you thank you um i believe giles i think i asked for you next please and then councillor murphy um then councillor blake no, I, I concur with other members views uh, uh, mention was made of the previous land landscaping condition um, but as with most conditions of that kind in this context it's really not worth the paper it's written on because unless you condition it to be maintained in perpetuity the applicant can install the landscaping scheme and six months later rip it out and do whatever they want within within reason um, just sticking with the, the, the pavilion it's it doesn't have a great mass it I, 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 I see the, the objectors photograph uh, and, 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 the, and the outlook from the garden, the, the roof of the pavilion doesn't exceed that of the, of the swimming pool. Um, so there's no diminishing of outlook to my mind and there's no impact on, on privacy because it's at ground level. And OK, you, you, you might argue or wonder what the pavilion might be used for, for entertaining purposes and could that be disruptive. But any part of that garden could be used for, for sitting out, for entertaining, for somebody put up a, a a temporary gazebo to have a party so uh, there are no material reasons for me to to, to, to think of that, that would warrant turning it down so I'd, I'd, I'd have to support the recommendation thank you councillor howard councillor murphy now please and councillor blakeborough yeah thank you chair and uh principle i'm going on is the fact that with any retrospective uh application uh you have to ask yourself if this was like this when it came to us in the first place would we have approved it and that's exactly what an inspector would be uh, would be, be doing uh and i'm quite certain in my own mind that if i'd seen this on the original app application i i i would have approved it um so i should be voting for its approval now thank you councillor blakeborough yeah, just very quickly echoing those words. Um, it's very emotive when somebody comes asking for retrospective planning because um, neighbours will look and say, well, blimey, they've flaunted the rules and regulations there. Um, and, you know, there is there are no penalties to that. However, when it comes to us, we have to put a motion aside and just look at the application uh, as it is. Um, and as the others have said, I can see no... Um, uh, planning reason to refuse it. Um, looking at the use of that, then that comes down to environmental policies um, and legislation and not planning. Thank you, Councillor Blackwood. Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you, Jim. Um, obviously, uh, looking at that photo there seems quite a bit different from the photo that we were handed around. And um, from the photo handed around, it obviously seems to be in more of a, a prominent position because it's at a different angle. Um, I just wondered if there was any possibility of any um, landscaping, in a, in a sense, around it. Um, oh, that's better. Yeah, I think you can see it more clearly there. Um, you know, just to hide it a little, that's all. Oh, 
Oh, so that's good. that's in the process then. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. I believe. Oh, Councillor Higginson. Certainly, I don't remember anyone proposing we accept this, but I'm, I'm prepared to move it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, um, uh, I have uh, I have reservations. Sorry, uh, Oh, sorry. Not surprisingly, I have reservations every time a problem like this comes up. It is the inevitable retrospective. The only point I would make about it is that when this original planning condition was made, the um, the council employee put in there this is this is a strict planning condition. Well. You know, it, it, it brings into a, a disrepute, if, if you like, a strict planning condition that was imposed on it and then ignored. I accept everything else, else that everybody said, but it, it really does worry me that when these, these sort of things crop, crop up. And it, it brings about uh, bad relationships between, uh, uh, be, between people who believe they have a planning a condition that is uh, right and proper and uh, which they expect will stand um, and, and so I, I do worry about I do worry about this I hear what all my fellow councillors have said but I really do want to uh, make the point that in some of these things there, there should be a, a way of making clear to all parties that uh, maybe a retrospective planning uh, planning uh, permission uh, can get, uh, crop up. And the other thing I would say is that when the uh, gazebo was put in its original place without any planning permission, um, that actually is uh, is no defence in law. Um, Didn't need planning then? It, I know, but it, it, the point was it, the, the gentleman said he... he didn't know with it. Please make your point, Councillor Dovey. So the, the, the only point I'm trying to make is the 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 situation of over retros on occasion it, it is a very delicate one, and it, they are very um, very uh, difficult on neighbours at, at the end of the day, and we really ought to find some way of uh, uh, pointing out when planning permission is given that there could be some flexibility down the, down the road should somebody want it. Thank you. Councillor Feakin. Thank you, Chair. And just to move it on, Freddie, from my point of view, is that we're looking at that picture now. It's a really good quality scheme. It's a really good quality landscape. If that was presented to us now, I'd have no hesitation about approving that. If it was a tin shack, I'd be reticent. In the photo that was passed around, there was a trampoline in the far corner. I'd much prefer to look at that gazebo than I would two trampolines and, and a heap of toys. So for me, it's a fantastic scheme. It's a high quality scheme. Um, and it probably, in my mind, uh, uh, improves the, um, the, the, the setting. Um, and then so I'd echo everyone else's and, and move to approve. Thank you very much. I believe Mark wishes to comment now first before we take the vote. Quickly then, please, Councillor Dovey. We've, I think we've debated this application long no, enough. I just want to make one thing. I am not poo-pooing what is there at the moment. I wanted to try and make a point how some of these things with retro retrospective can go wrong right. and it right. becomes Thank you. A, 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 a big thing for neighbours. Thank you. Mark? I, I, I was just going to clarify the situation retrospective applications. We know they can be frustrating, but it is a part of the system. We have to consider them exactly as Councillor Murphy referenced. Um, there is no solution to it, um, and you can't get rid of that part of the process, and sometimes people need to amend their plans after they've been approved. Um, think of all the projects we deal with as council, where we've had you know tweaks after the uh, the approval, not retrospectively, but we have to have that flexibility. So I won't labour the points, just to say we have to consider them in the way that Councillor Murphy said. Um, if this came to us, there's no hesitation that we would have approved it, or certainly his officers recommended approval. So um, that's that's our advice to you. Thank you, Mark. I believe um, Councillor Powell moved approval and seconded by Councillor Becker. Could I have a show of hands, please, for approval? So that's uh, unanimous, Chairman. Right, thank you very much. 
just like to state to all members that Phil, uh, Councillor Phil, wishes to comment on a meeting at the end of the meeting today, okay? If you could bear with us at the end of the meeting. Is that about the, um, yeah. the training? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Page 11, I believe we're on now. It's, it's very difficult sometimes to follow the agenda where we jump about because we've got speakers anyway. So we're going to page 11 now, 00703, and this is in Coent. Thank you. Okay, we're at uh, Deisto Golf Club. It's the site we visit, visited yesterday. That's the, the former golf club. It's now uh, empty. Uh, this proposal is for a change of use of the golf clubhouse and associated managers' living accommodation in the first floor to a large single dwelling house with five bedrooms. There are no external changes proposed, so there would be neglig negligible visual impact on the surrounding countryside. The extent of the curtilage, which I'll show you in a moment, um, uh, of, of, the of the proposed dwelling can be seen on the slideshow in the land edge red, which I'll get to. So that's the frontage there. We park the minibus outside that. That's the entrance. That's the <coughs> rear of it. So uh, to the back, uh, if you stand with your back... Uh, but behind us, if you were looking at that face on, is the rest of the golf course, which wraps around the building. The actual curtilage would, would come to the end of the grass there, so it'd be quite a tight curtilage on that side of the property, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, the curtilage would also include the parking area at the front, which, um, which will, I'm, I'm sure will be tidied up by the, uh, by the applicant in due course. And that's the entrance, which would, is off the minor road between Caldicott and uh, Kiowent. Uh, again, showing the access as, as it comes into the site. Uh, so that's it in the wider context. It's the site, um, uh, as you're coming from Kiowent in the north, down to Caldicott in the south, it's just on the right-hand side. And the golf course is behind it, which has been returned to agriculture. Uh, and that's that's it. And that, the red edge shows the curtilage that incorporates the car parking area and some, some uh, paddock to the north of the site uh, as well. That's the existing floor plans, so which shows all the, the changing rooms, the lounge, uh, restaurants, kitchen, etc. on the ground floor, the club shop. And then there was the manager's residence above and meeting rooms uh, up above as well, and further changing rooms on the end there on the right. And that's being changed to uh, one enlarged house for an extended family, uh, kitchen, games room, dining area, lounge, uh, entrance hall, Cloakrooms, utility room, and, a, and a, a store on the end. And then there would be five bedrooms with, with two studies, bathrooms, a dressing room, and a store, upstairs store as well on the end. So if I leave it on the curtilage application. So uh, as said, the extent of the curtilage is shown on that red edge plan, and this primarily relates to the car parking area and land to the immediate north of the existing building. And this is considered to be acceptable in landscape terms. Access would be via the existing one serving the golf club, former golf club building. And since the application was made, the golf, golf course is closed and the golf club is no longer in use. And many of the objections received related to the need to keep the golf club house open to sustain the actual course. And this now has little likelihood of reopening and is understood to be being returned to agriculture. And we saw that yesterday. The key issue is whether the property has been marketed acceptably, having regard to LDP policy H4, that prioritises a business use for this type of property before considering whether residential use would be permissible. By business use, this could primarily mean B1 use, that would be office, light industry, or research and development, or possibly a tourism-related use like a hotel or a guest house. The marketing exercise, which has been ongoing since at least March, included three adverts within the Argus, South Wales Argus, and used Linnells, Parries and Zoopla to advertise the site. The agent has also notified the Council's uh, Business and Enterprise section about this site to help widen knowledge of its availability for business use. The asking price of around a million pounds reflects a business use and one that relates to this unique and substantial property. The asking price was referred to the district value of bias 
uh, and the district value did not dispute the actual asking price uh, offered, uh, set out by the marketing. Although there was some initial interest, none of those parties view, viewing the prop actually sorry none of those parties actually viewed the property or proceeded any further with their inquiry. Neither Linnells nor Parries have received any other tangible interest, according to the Zoopla report that showed 111 views and three direct clicks for the period until 18th of October recently. And taken as a whole, the marketing exercise is considered reasonable and meets the terms of policy H4 of the LDP, which seeks a six-month marketing period. It has been marketed for, for quite a, a bit longer than that. Um, we're minded to approve as officers. Um, permitted development rights will be removed by condition to manage future proposals for sizable extensions or large buildings in the Kirtledge to ensure such proposals do not harm the character of this attractive rural area. Therefore, we maintain control over the size uh, and, and appearance of that type of development in the future. An off-site affordable housing contribution is being made via a Section 106 agreement. So taking all that into account, we would recommend approval. Thank you. Madam Chairman, uh, before I close, my daughter-in-law worked there. I don't think it's a declaration of interest now, is it? Uh, worked there. She worked there up until the time it closed as a, as a, as a golf club. Thank you. Um, whose ward is this? Is it, it is in your ward, is it, Phil? Right, and most members were there yesterday. One question I'd like to ask, uh, perhaps officers are aware, um, the course has gone back to farmland now. Is there a principal farmhouse serving that land? Because this is obviously a new, new build, you could say, many years ago, but is there a, a farmhouse servicing the land that has gone back to farmland? Uh, effectively, uh, yes, Chair, it's that. Uh, the, the farmer actually is, is part of the extended family who will be living there. And, and, and the store on, on the end, on the um, top end as you look at it there, um, look at, it, at the, the, the plan, that store there on the, on the right hand side uh, currently contains agricultural implements. And, no, what uh, I meant, was there a, a farmhouse? There, there wasn't a farmhouse there uh, b before, um, but before, oh, hang on, there, there was really, uh, Dewstow Farm, which is the other side of the road, um, uh, which is where the original owner um, still lives of the land, um, and then it yeah, was uh, was the farmhouse for the for the that, that area. But for that actual section, uh, the current farmhouse is uh, Justo Manor, as it's now being called. Um, which is and and the the, the uh, guy farming it is one of the extended family living there. I was just thinking that you've got a big parcel of land now with no farmhouse mm. sort of governing that. Mm. But as you but say, it's, it's it under has. that, will it? It has. Right. Thank you for explaining yeah. that. Um, I would add a little bit to the history of, of this. Um, <laughs> this is a golf club that was uh, very, very successful um, many years ago when golf was more popular than it currently is. It went down and down and down, and the uh, family who, who owned it, who were the original farmers, uh, marketed it. Um, uh, officers felt that um, even though uh, Ms. The, the current applicant, Mr. Phelps, uh, bought it and uh, in, in, intended to, uh, to to try and run it initially as as a golf club, very quickly uh, formed the opinion that the, that wasn't uh, commercially viable, um, and he closed it down. We then said to him that uh, it hadn't been marketed sufficiently, so we did it again. So I think uh, the uh, time has come, uh, and I know it's the, the view of the community that um, uh, it's time to uh, regularize the uh, p position. I think uh, the, the current occupier has, uh, has demonstrated that, that he has tried to, to comply. So um, I would uh, be quite happy to recommend approval. Thank you very much for that history, Councillor Murphy. Um, Councillor Giles Howard, please. I'll second that, Madam Chair. I mean, looking at the, the plan there brings back some 
happy and less than happy memories of, of lost balls and the water hazards which I can make out there it was a great course both at the valley and, and the park it's sad that it's it's come to this but you know what's the alternative the marketing tests have, have, have been met do we want a, a derelict building surrounded by tarmac and no we don't um, so this is really probably one of the one of the few answers there are so I'm happy to support it thank you and uh, Councillor Fike the only, and I'm not against the application at all, but the only um, concern or the only thing I would like to sort of um, uh, discuss with a bit of reassurance would be that it's going to be a multi-generational house. At the moment, we're going to receive one affordable housing contribution, and we know that if it was therefore split in future, we would receive another affordable housing contribution, whatever the policy position is at that time. Is there, are we sure that they, uh, being, we know that there's going to be a multi-generational dwell in uh, is, are, are we sure that they couldn't make it uh, a sort of split residences and then claim some sort of rights after the event um, uh, and therefore avoid the um, affordable housing contribution so can we can we sort of remove that position now at this stage um, just to make sure that we're not in five, seven years time finding out that actually has been split we didn't realize it and therefore they've avoided the affordable housing contribution thank you very much i believe mark will comment on that now for you councillor Fikin. Um, if it were subdivided um, without permission, then um, we'd be able to enforce against that. But there is a four-year rule that gives immunity after four years. Um, I'm not sure whether we could try it for concealment. If it was done under the radar, um, concealed from us, they weren't paying council tax and the like. So it's certainly far less clear-cut than our recent um, House in the Barn success um, that we reported at the last meeting or the one before. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd err on that side of caution. Can we do anything else to prevent it? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I don't think there's any other controls we'd impose on it. We'd keep an eye on it via council tax records. Um, luckily, um, in about four years' time, people might be out canvassing, so I know how many leaflets are dropping off. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we could, sorry, we're just having a chat. We could uh, require some kind of legal agreement, the unilateral undertaking, that it wouldn't be uh, subdivided in some way. Any views, Rob, in particular? Um, I, yeah, I suppose, um, in theory, um, that, that that may be possible, yeah. I, um, I must admit, I haven't, I haven't considered that, but... Uh, yeah, that that may be um, may be possible. Yeah. Sorry, Chairman, I couldn't uh, give you a more emphatic answer than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Councillor Feakin that's asking the question, but it was my concern because it is a very large building. Yes. Yeah. Madam Chairman, but the Councilor application Higgins. is as it is, isn't yes. it? Councillor Murphy. I would just uh, add that. Uh, I don't think they do themselves any any favours by turning it in, into into a terrace of, uh, of houses. I don't think it would quite work. So I, I I'm quite happy. I I, I moved approval. So put it to the vote, chair. Right. Thank yes. you, Councillor Murphy. Sorry. Sorry, Chair. I was just thinking through that. That there'll have to be um, a section one six agreement for the affordable housing contribution anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, there's no reason why we couldn't tie something into that if members felt strongly about it. Thank you. That's happy with that now, Councillor Feakin? Yes, yes, thank you. Councillor Murphy has moved approval. Do you have a seconder, please? Giles, you second it. Thank you very much. Could I have a show of hands for approval, please? Right, thank you. The next one on the agenda is on page 41, 00651 at Port Stewart. Thank you, Madam Chair. This application is yeah, 48 Main Road, Poor Skewit. Um, it's an erection of a two-storey annex within the residential curtilage of the property. The application was brought to planning committee members on the 7th of November with an officer recommendation to approve the application. Members expressed concern over the design of the annex and therefore it was deferred to go back to the applicant to discuss um, design solutions. Officers have now done that and have received an amended scheme, um, which is outlined on the new elevations now on this amended plan on the screen um, so in terms of alterations um, it's decorative amendments really to the proposed annex 
officers did express the concerns of the members in terms of the form and the, and the scale of the annex. However, the applicant does want the existing scheme to be determined. Um, so this is the scheme in front, uh, in front of you. Albeit now they have be made amendments to try and improve the visual appearance of the extension. So we constituted stone coins on, on the sides of the building to match the house. Uh, lintels and sills, overhanging eaves and barge boards, all to match the existing house. So now it has harmonised with the house, if you like. Um, I said we have tried to get the other amendments, but the applicant do want the application dealt with on its merits and it's the scheme to be presented and um, to be determined now uh, as members see fit. Um, so again, officers are recommending the application is improved with the amended scheme that has now been um, submitted by the applicant. Thank you very much, Craig. Uh, any particular, is there any ward member here? Right, I'll take you first then, Councillor Higgins, please. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I agree with the comments made. It, it does look a bit better than what it was. I still have reservations about it, I really do. Uh, and um, I, um, I just leave I, I, I leave, let other members decide which way they want to go on it. But I, I, I appreciate the, the concerns of the neighbours and, and the immediate neighbours. And I think, it's, I, I think it does uh, um, affect the, the uh, you know the, their properties in in the way it is built and added to I will say. Thank you, Councillor Higginson. Councillor Giles Howard, next, please. Appreciate the the revisions that were made, Chair. But the the key issue for me, as it was last time, was the orientation of the of of the roof and how that sort of one and a half story extension relates to the building as a as, as a whole and I, I just don't think it does with that link to the side if only they they turn that roof around 90 degrees so you had the planes facing the same way as the main roof and they could still use the the, the, the first, or create first floor accommodation by putting a dormer in in, in, the, in the front and and, and rear so they, they really wouldn't lose very much and it would just look so much better sat against the main house even being separated by that small what I can't see was it like a canopy or an overhang where the little figure is on the drawing on the on the right um, I, it would be helpful if, if, if maybe um, we could have an explanation of why the uh, applicant wasn't willing to turn the roof around. But I, to be honest, I'd, I'd be happy to go to appeal because I don't think that would look good in, good in the street scene. And I, I would think the inspector would, if it was around the back, yeah, you know, there's no concerns. But I, I, I would have thought there's something an, an inspector would have, would, have, would have sympathy with us as a as committee. And just making that one revision of turning the roof would make all the difference to me. So I, I, I would move refusal again, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Councillor Becker, please. Um, I would actually disagree. I don't believe that those aesthetic concerns are something that an inspector would uphold for us. Um, so I would actually encourage that we accept this on the basis that we have got a, well, in some people's opinion, <laughs> a better looking building. Um, does it break any of the planning laws? That's the question. Not, is it a nice building for me? And I can't see it breaking any of the laws from where I'm sitting. So. Thank you, Councillor Becker. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Chairman. I'm afraid I've just listened to what Councillor Becker said, and I, I suppose he's right, but I'm afraid I feel the same as Councillor Giles, that... Uh, the, if the roof was the other way now with a nice little dormer in it, it would look much better in the street scene, but um, whatever the inspector would say, I don't know. Councillor David Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I would have to agree with uh, uh, this application. We've been there, I was out on the site visit the last time, and uh, we asked the officers to go back. Uh, uh, with our concerns, they have amended the original uh, drawings. Um, so, the only thing we was talking about the last time that there was a condition on there they couldn't sell it as two separate buildings. It had to be one property. I think I, I, might, I got that right. Uh, I, I would stick to that, but uh, to me, I would go along with the application. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Anybody else? Do you wish to comment on that, Craig? Yes, Madam Chair. Yeah, it is conditioned that it would be an annex only, so it would be an annex built into the main house, so it would only be secondary accommodation. Uh, in terms of the visual impact on the wider area, I 
in terms of what a plan inspector, they would look at how it impacts on the street scene. And um, if we look at the site plan, it is tucked away um, in a, a sort of courtyard of private dwellings, really. So mm. its impact on the wider area, I think, is, is negligible, really. Um, that's my opinion as a planning officer. Obviously, members, you, meet, you know, determination. Anybody else wish to comment? Councillor Clark? No. no. Oh, Councillor Philip Murphy, please. Right. Councillor Clark, you didn't want to comment? No. no. I cover my thoughts in my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will comment. I don't, I don't like it one bit. I think having such a large house on a, a reasonably sized plot, for obviously for a large family, there's about five or six bedrooms, I just think this, you know, takes away all that value in having a nice house on a large plot. It just doesn't um, gel for me at all. I think it spoils the main house. But that's my opinion. Um, which I think I'm entitled to, but the planning issue is a different thing altogether. So Giles has moved refusal. Do you have a seconder for refusal? Councillor Higginson. <coughs> Could I have a show of hands for refusal then, please? That's nine for refusal, Chairman. Right, thank you. Yeah, Chair, what's the reason for refusal, please? Oh, gosh. Yeah, Giles, you're better. Well, maybe some, something I'll, I'll, I'll Sorry? Don't know about that. But along the lines of the, the, the um, appearance of the, the annex would detract from the, the, the character and appearance of the house. Um, and, and, and well, I think of something and... And yeah, I think and the surrounding area. Right, thank yeah, you. Just, Do you wish to comment? Yeah, I just thought there was some sort of uh, design policy that's um, applicable in Wales that might be useful here. LDP. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just uh, we. It's, it's committee's decision, so we just need to clarify what your your reasons for refusal are. We can fill in uh, some of the gaps with some policy, but. So, so we've got a that you think is the appearance detracts from the character and appearance of the house and surrounding area. Yeah, yeah. includes its orientation, presumably, from what you said. No, we haven't. Not the committee deadline before Christmas. <laughs> right. We now go, but on to. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application seeks the demolition of a garage and outbuilding at 20 Crossway Rogget and the extension of a t um, erection of a two-storey dwelling uh, with the provision of five off-road parking spaces at the front of the site. Uh, that's photographs of, um, of the property there. It's the end. Um, it's the uh, rendered one that hasn't been painted. You see the site extension and the garage uh, is due to be demolished and um, in its place, um, a small, that's the, the property, and some other views there of the extension of the garage. And if we can go on to the proposal, uh, proposed direction of a, a two bedroom uh, dwelling. So it, that would make uh, the semi-detached pair <coughs> being um, into a, a three uh, link. Uh, the site is located within the Rogget development boundary, Therefore, the principle is acceptable, subject to detailed planning considerations. Uh, once the garage and outbuilding have been demolished, there will be a plot of sufficient size to accommodate a new dwelling with off-road parking and amenity space. Uh, it's considered that the design and materials of the proposed dwelling would be in keeping with the character of the area. Uh, the proposal therefore complies with policies DS1 and H1 of the LDP. Uh, the main property affected by the proposal is number 22 crossways on the eastern boundary. Uh, there would, however, there would be at least five metres between number 22 and the new dwelling. Uh, no windows on the site elevation. Therefore, the proposal <coughs> would not result in overdevelopment and would not be harmful to the amenity of number 22. 
The proposal maintains reasonable levels of privacy and amenity for neighbouring properties and therefore complies with policies EP1 and DES1. In relation to the parking, the proposal provides five off-street parking spaces which meets the adopted parking standards. It's known that narrow roads in the area contribute to parking stress, but by providing the necessary parking, the proposal would not add to the parking stress. Officers therefore recommend approval of this application, subject to the conditions outlined in the report and a Section 106 agreement requiring a financial contribution towards affordable housing in the area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paul. I can remind me, perhaps I've skipped over it, but what were the finishes on the, because you've got render and you've got sort of different uh, it finishes. It uh, brick. It was going to be brick. Yes. The same brick. There's rough cast and there's yeah, render on along on the terrace, isn't there? Yes, you see? there's brick further down the street as well. Is it the same brick as on that floor? So it's going to be brick uh, like that there, is it? Councillor Feekin. I'd move to approve, Chair. It's an improvement on the existing parking situation, um, and I think it's going to be in keeping with the rest of the street, so I'd move to approve. Thank you very much. Councillor Webb, you're just seconding. No comment. Uh, Councillor Blakeborough. Uh, just a quick question. It's just a, a notice that the uh, Rogget Community Council, no reply to date. Have we, are we within the policy time scale to get information? We're following policy. Yes, Very often, if they've got no concerns about it, they don't wish to comment. Yeah, right. Anybody else wish to comment? Councillor Harris? Thank you, Chair. It's just that highways seem to be uh, particularly upset <coughs> set about uh, uh, this, uh, and, and what they're basically saying is that um, uh, if we allow it and uh, allow the car parking in front, <coughs> then people won't be able to park on the other side of the road. I can't see that this development will stop people parking on the other side of the road by, uh, uh, by law, or am I totally, uh, totally wrong there? The highways indicates, <clears throat> you can see where the cars are parked at, at the uh, right-hand side of the... Uh, um, on, the side. Uh, on the opposite side, but it's inferring here from highways that if the cars are parked in the de development we're talking about, nobody uh, will be legally allowed to park on the other side of the road. That's the inference. <clears throat> um, uh, quite honestly, it's, it's hellish difficult parking anywhere in the, uh, in the county, and, and if we uh, do say yes, <clears throat> anyone buying the property will, uh, uh, will know the problems and have to put up with the problems. <coughs> and if and if there's something there, they can go knock on the door and ask them if they could move their car. If they can't manoeuvre out of there, anyway, do you wish to comment on that, Mark? No, yeah. No. Well, right. Can I just point um, in the um, the highways response? Uh, they didn't think that there was required depth uh, for the parking, uh, but it has been measured and it's just under five metres, so it does comply with the four point eight. So uh, there is enough parking. Oh, just clarification. Why is this come to us? Highways objection. Highways objection. Fine, it's fine. Right, Councillor Feakin has moved approval. Could you have a seconder of Councillor Webb? And so I have a show of hands, please, for approval. Right. On the agenda today is the Peel decision. Uh, I don't know if Mark or Phil wish to comment on it on item five. It was basically an enforcement case where somebody um, built pillars and gates. Um, they applied for retrospective planning permission, uh, but the gates were found to be um, across a public footpath. Therefore, um, the footpaths um, objected. Um, they appealed against... Um, uh, we approved the pillars, but we refused the gates, and uh, we refused finials that they had on the top as well. Um, the inspector agreed that the, there is a, a public right of way. They can't have the gates and the finials needed to come off as well. So um, it's a good result for us. 
Right. Thank you for that, Paula. Now, Officer Phil, would you like to comment? <laughs> It is uh, just prior warning of a prior notice of a uh, potential training event with the Design Commission for Wales. We did something with them last year, if you remember, or it was earlier this year.